I'm Greg McHale, and I'm going to talk about the process that I go through when it's go time on an animal in the mountain environment. Often, I find that after a stalk in the mountains, I a lot of times pick these animals up when they're bedded down, and it's a matter of getting into a situation where you have a setup that is ready for them to stand up after you know that afternoon nap that they're having. We're talking about whether it's sheep or goats or caribou, whatever it is in the mountains, there's a lot of times when I have to set up in a situation that is either uphill or downhill and I have to be able to do it quickly and efficiently, but with the knowledge that I probably have some time and that I'm going to be sitting behind the gun or in a position to get behind the gun quickly if I need to when that animal gets up. The few things that I go through, I have almost, uh, it's second nature, but it's an internal checklist. And the first thing is, how do I get into a position where I can shoot, but yet if I have to move and I have to be a little bit flexible, then I'm not gonna get seen while I'm in the process of the setup. So that's the first thing. Do I have cover and concealment that I can get behind, but yet still be able to move around uh, as needed to be able to move with the animal if it gets up and it starts to walk. So that's the first thing I look for. Once I find that, or I know that I'm in a position that the odds of me getting seen if, I, if I'm moving and getting into the setup is very minimal, because often there are situations where you are just in the open and you are going to expose yourself to a certain degree. So once I've got that established that I can get set up, now it's about building building my setup, building my the platform and the base for my weapon and building that base in a place that I can comfortably lay down um, if, that's, if that is an option. I can get prone and I can get behind the gun and stay there for a long length of time while you're waiting for that animal to sit up or stand up. When I'm looking for that, obviously, you know, in a mountain environment, uh, you're gonna come across whether it's boulder fields or sometimes you can find a flat piece of ground that you can lay on, but oftentimes it's just gonna be you take what you get. Looking for something that is going to provide you um, a place that you can be comfortable is the most important. So whether it's a flat rock or whether it's something that you can lean against, um, but the foundation has to be set up in a place in the mountains that you can sit behind it for a little while. So then it goes to, okay, what does that foundation look like? Well, for me, when it's a tripod, I always go to the tripod because it's three points of stable and I'm always carrying a good tripod, whether it's you know for my spotting scope or my binos, I've got a good quality tripod anyways. So now it's about utilizing that same piece of equipment, attach it to my weapon, so now I've got the most stable platform that I can get um, and be comfortable behind. So once I establish that, whether it's a bipod or a tripod, but I go with the tripod every time that I possibly can. So then once I got that position set up, I've got the weapon on the animal, whether it's uphill or downhill, which is often the case in the mountains. If you can get a straight across shot across a valley or across a, a drainage, that's awesome. But if that's not the case, you're going to be in an up or down position typically. So now I have to get behind the weapon where I want to square it up. I want to be as comfortable as I can. The beautiful thing about the modern tripods now and the way you can lock your gun into them, you can literally lock it in, get yourself into a position, lock that in, and then you can move away from the weapon if you have to find a more comfortable place to glass and watch that animal until they do stand up. Because oftentimes you can be behind that, you know, behind the glass, behind your scope on the animal, and that animal is not going to stand up for hours. So you have to have the ability to be able to walk over or move over a few yards or a few feet and get into a, the shooting position, but maybe you're not in that shooting position at all times. So that's where really a tripod shines as well. So I get into position, I'm squared up, and now it's all about just practicing. Often what I do if an animal is out there, you know, 300, 
500, 600 yards away, I have the ability to use a little bit more time and certainly I can practice that shot. With an unloaded weapon, I just sit behind it, I put the crosshairs on it, and I literally practice the squeezing of that trigger. And I'll go through that a number of times while that animal is just sitting there bedded down. And that gives me muscle memory, and it also just gives me relaxation that when that sheep or that goat, whatever it is, does stand up, I've done this 10, 15, 20 times. I've, you know, in the last hour or whatever it is, the last 15 minutes. If that animal's been there for 15 minutes, I can go through this whole system. And then when the animal does stand up, it's just second nature. There's no buck fever. There's no jitters. There's no excitement. It's just head down and get the job done. So those are the three big things that I go through when I'm looking to take an animal in the mountain environment specifically, where you know that they're not you know, walking across a basin or they're pretty stationary. You can go, I go through this system that I have, that's a three-step system, which consists of finding a great place to shoot from, getting the proper setup and stable weapon, and then practicing that shot on the animal before it's go time. I do that every time I'm in the mountains and on every certainly bedded down animal. That's, that's the process I go through and it works for me every time. So if you like this video, you like the three tips that I gave there,